Process-led design is asking what is the work that needs to happen and structuring that work in some way and there's different ways of structuring it. The, the process way is with the value chain, you say what are the key value steps in the organization? You know, what are the inputs, what are the outcomes that your organization is creating and how do they break down? What we use is a taxonomy of work. So we turn that value stream into a process taxonomy and we use that first to understand what do people currently do? So how's the work currently being done? And often there's work that should be done that isn't. And then we move to, so what should the 2B look like? A way to start capturing the information, often because these taxonomies don't exist, is with post-it notes. So I will sit in a group, maybe five, six people, and we will write down on post-it notes what the work is in some sort of structure. Frequently they'll be put up in a big wall. I've seen literally 30, 40 meters of post-it notes around a room with different colors symbolizing different things. Is it a process? Is it a decision? And then they sit there. Traditionally, they're then typed into PowerPoint and kind of used to build something that's called like a racy diagram or an accountability matrix. And that's kind of it, which is a shame because all that work of all those brains to sit down and document all of this stuff is not really being used effectively. So what we believe is you need to take it to the next step, which is make this a physical part of the design process. People, when they're designing, work better when they're standing up or moving around a table like this. And I will then, I need to use tools. A tool I can use is a process card. And on this card, I might collect information about each of the activities. I might what, ask what is the frequency that this occurs? Is it strategic, operational, transactional? Is it customer facing or not? I can use different symbols and different colors to represent different things. And very much inspired by children's games like match attacks or baseball cards. I will then take this work around a table and we can start laying it out and breaking the cards up and saying, okay, what are they? Oh, here I've got employee relations and implement engagement plan. How good am I? So I've got how good I am, what have you. And then I can start linking that to positions. Say what positions or which roles should be doing what. And I can start clustering the work based on that. When you're doing the process design, you start off doing it the process to roles. A role is different to a position. A position is a reporting line in an org chart. So I could have one role and lots of different positions. A position is defined, I could have the same role, say sales analyst, in each single geography. So if I'm doing, the role is the same role, we've got the same activities, the position is who do I report to and why. So when I'm doing my activity analysis, when I'm designing, I'm doing it at the role level first. And then that cascades down to what does each position do. So I cluster all my work out on a table like this. Obviously it would be more structured than this. And then I can start having a discussion. And as a group, we can start picking them up and say, oh, here's a role. What are they doing? What decisions are they making? Does that make sense? Is this one FTE or multiple? Would this role be motivating? Could I recruit for it or not? So many, in a, in a way, I'm building a job description, the beginning of a job description. What's fascinating is when you do this, and you do it as a game, uh, the same organization, people in the same organization with the same information will come up with totally different roles. And then you can start having discussions about those different roles. Why did you give this role A this activity? Why this decision here and not there? And that leads to really, really useful conversations and ultimately a far, far better design.